Greetings fellow humans, Brad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a keyboard. I've not tested any from this manufacturer before, but it's been coming across my feed and the reviews on Amazon are primarily positive. Yes, I know we all know about reviews on Amazon, so we're taking a look today. If you guys haven't noticed, I like to find keyboards. I mean, obviously I love to find gems you know, good keyboards that have a good, you know, good price point and, you know, that can sound much, much better with just a little bit of elbow, elbow grease. But I also like finding duds because I hope that I prevent somebody going through the process of thinking, oh, I'm going to buy something and this is going to be really great and they get it and they find issues and everything. So if I can, if I can buy it and prevent you guys you know anyone out there from you know purchasing a dud and going through the whole hassle of it then I think I've I've satisfactorily done what I'm trying to do I mean share my opinion obviously on keyboards but help people you know know what they're getting before they get it so anyway without much further ado let me introduce the Pulsar TKL it is a uh, model PCMK TKL Black, or this SKU is PCMK801B, and it is an ANSI, so I would assume that they probably, I believe I've, I have seen an ISO version of this, but this is a TKL uh, from the company Pulsar. Now, like I said, I've never gotten anything from this company before, so I don't know what to expect. It is a bare bone. A sticker. It's an odd little sticker. It's like a straw going through a happy face. I ah, okay. I don't know. You're calling this an 80%. Oh, I guess it is. And here's the manual. All right. So that's the paperwork. I'm just gonna put that back for right now. Assume this is the keyboard. Let me set it aside for the moment. Let's see what we've got as far as accessories go. All together in one bag, we have the metal keycap and key switch puller, which is the preferable one. Plastic ones can scratch your keys. And then we have a braided uh, USB A to USB C cable. I'm not fond of those blocky ends, but what can you do? All right, so that's all for the accessory. Now the Pulsar does come in this, uh, it's kind of like that, uh, the reusable shopping bags they have uh, for big box stores. All right, so let's pull this off. But I mean, yeah, it's nice. I mean, it's no PE foam. <laughs> and then here we have, uh, this is a, flimsier plastic, but not the flimsiest. It's like right in the middle, um, but it should serve as a good dust cover. All right, so this is the Pulsar TKL in black. Now, it doesn't feel very substantial. Ooh, I gotta say, I do like that. So we can actually take a look at the PCB without even opening her up. So we got a clear case, though I do not. So the LED might still be just pointing straight up. There's all the serial numbers and everything. These wide feet kind of remind me of the um, GMMK TKL. That USB-C port is quite recessed in there, but. The one thing that we can see is that there is a, um, I guess it's probably poron or silicon. There is a um, dampening mat between the, um, the plate and the PCB. Okay, now I was just looking at these. It looks like there's more writing or designs printed on the PCB. So it is a North Face and LED. It is five pin compatible. Let's look at these stabilizers. Ooh, 
stabilizers are actually quite stable and they do have the slightest amount of grease just enough Hmm, not bad. So they're plate mounted stabs, but um, they're pretty good. There's a uh, silicone gasket to prevent that echoing that can happen in the space bar. And, huh, these on this side could use a piece of tape. They're not that loose, but they're slightly looser than the space bar on the left shift. Um, other than that, obviously we do not have, this is a standard um, tray mount, though it really could have been made gasket mount fairly easy, I would say, but let's see if we're going to keep it and try to do some modifications there. I'm not quite sure based on the way that it's designed. Not quite sure based on the way that it's designed if it's if it would be amenable to doing either a burger mount. I'm trying to see where it screws into the bottom case. Okay, there's one stud, there's another. Yeah, probably would not be a gasket mount contender, but it may be a burger o ring mount contender. So, obviously, only so much we can do with the board. At this um, at this stage, we can look at some RGBs real quick. See what they look like. Ooh, that's pretty bright. Oh, I gotta say that's pretty cool. That's a separate um panel of LEDs. Yeah, it looks like three LEDs right there, and they're just cycling through RGB. That is actually very nice. That's a nice touch. As far as design and aesthetics go, um, I'm hoping that's just a uh, a default, and I can change out of that. And not that those colors are stuck, but it's probably that. So today I was going to go ahead and load up some switches that I think everybody's going to be familiar with. These are the the milky um, yellows uh, from Gatoron, not the pros, just milky yellows. Uh, they have been lubed. And they've also been broken in, I believe I broke these in roughly 400,000 times. So they're actually quite nice. They feel very nice and there's like no scratch in there whatsoever. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and load these up. I'm gonna disconnect it while I do it so I don't accidentally stop <laughs> recording. And we'll speed through this real quick. All right, and here we are with all the uh, switches loaded. Before I put on the caps, I just wanted to see, you know, the milky yellows, I mean, they don't have the window, but for the most part, they allow a good amount of RGB to shine through. Yeah, not too bad. So even if you have shine through keycaps, I think you will still have some light, let's see. Not much, but you still got some light that's shining through. Now, obviously, if you want that, you want to probably get some switches with the with the window. I'm just using the milky yellows because I think a lot of people know how they sound off the bat, so it's easier to get an idea. Today for keycaps, I wanted to go with a set that I just got from a mystery box buy. Usually, <laughs> for they're not necessarily the best. I've had very bad luck with Epo Maker, but um, I'm sure you guys don't want to hear about it. Uh, I purchased a couple weeks ago a uh, mystery keycap set from Canon Keys, and I was lucky to receive a set that I did not already have a version of. It is gray on black. So, I know there's a couple of Bolding, but we won't need those as ISO keys. It definitely has plenty of keys and they are very thick keycaps. Um, I'm actually 
even though they are die sub, which I'm not particularly fond of, um, for $29, I think uh, they're a pretty good deal. Um, like I said, they're sufficiently thick. Uh, they come in, I believe, at, at 1.6 by is that thick. So um, you're gonna have a nice deep resonance even though we're dealing with the cherry profiles. Now, I guess one thing we could test real quick is since we are doing north facing, so let's try that one more time. Here's the back. Oh, not catching. And here's the front. There's a little bit, but it's not not holding on to the paper. So yeah, I don't think there's a really that much interference to speak of. So I don't think that should affect the sound test. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and load these up and we'll speed through that so that we can go ahead and take a look at it finished and go for the sound test. And here we are, the Pulsar TKL with Gatoron Milky Yellows and nice PBT from Canon Keys Black on Gray. I think it's looking quite sharp. I put on the rainbow light effect kind of to match that side. Um, doesn't have much on, I mean, I, I was able to guess just function page up and function home to change the colors and the, um, the lighting effect, but they watch it down with the software. So if I end up keeping this, we'll uh, take a look at that further. I think they uh, they missed a huge chance here. I mean, even if they only did one strip of LED, I mean, I know some of that comes through, bleeds through down, but I really think had they just added a few LEDs, you know, I mean, literally just a handful, four, six on the bottom and the top and four on the end, it would have made a huge difference for the younger club. That's all. But that's neither here nor there. I think it has nice bright RGB. I really do like that effect. Um, so we don't have any um, case dampening. Now, this, if I keep it, it's definitely getting a silicone pull because obviously we can still, we'll still be able to see into it. Um, we won't be blocking it. And we uh, will have a nice... Uh, look at the TKL because I mean obviously the TKL nicely silk screen so may as well show it off let's get technical today we're taking a look at the Pulsar PCMK TKL in the Anzai layout for American National Standards Institute the MSRP of this keyboard is $69.99 bare bone it is a three and five pin compatible hot swap keyboard with north facing LEDs it has an aluminum top and it also offers per key RGB. Fully loaded with switches and PBT keycaps, it weighs in at 772 grams. It has a chin of 16 millimeters above the surface with a back of 25 millimeters and a typing angle of seven degrees at default. If, you're used, if you use the middle legs, you will go up to 30 millimeters on the back with an 11 degree typing angle. Using the final and last set of legs, it'll bring up the height to 37 millimeters with a typing degree of 13 degrees. So honestly, I can say that I'm pleasantly surprised by this keyboard, despite it not having any um, case dampening and just being clear, it actually sounds pretty good. It would probably sound much better with some modifications. So I'm considering keeping this and modifying it further but I'm gonna see what's going on with Black Friday sales because I still think that at $70 bare bone it's a little bit pricier than it should be for what it has um, stabilizers are actually quite decent uh, it looks and sounds good with these uh, milky Gatorons with the nice PBT black on gray and I really I've got to say 
I do. I usually don't like badges, you know, the companies. It's like, I know what keyboard you are. You know, if you put it on the bottom, that's fine. But this one, I actually say I would not want to cover up um, because I like it. If I were to keep it, I'd actually maybe try to 3D print a replacement in there so I could get some, something different, you know, budget keys or Mac tag or something. Um, but I've got to say that I mean, it's, it's on the verge of being a little too pricey. I haven't taken a look at the software. It's not QMK via. So if you take this and you take the Keychron, um, I, I, the V3, I'd have to say, or the V5. Yeah, the V5 is the TKL. Um, I would have to say that I would take the Keychron over this because there's just, it's better built, um, better materials. Uh, QMK via it's they're both um, tray mount so you're not missing out on any flex um, but if this one was around $40 45 even I'd say eh, either one uh, you know if software isn't all that important to you uh, yeah I, I mean honestly the price of this board should be lower than it is now I know I have seen it uh, at times on sale for I think as low as 49 which is closer but I mean it's a bare-bone kit it's not a known company and they're almost there I mean I would have personally put clear silicone in the bottom so you could still see the bottom the cool PCB um, uh, watermarks that they put on there and even some you know a couple of leds for underglow but they didn't do that despite that though i think it sounds decent enough um for some people this might actually be sufficient load it with some switches and some keycaps and and go because the stabilizers are surprisingly good they're almost as good as the mk 870s which i consider some of the best stock stabilizers out there or at least that i've encountered anyway going to go ahead and leave you guys with a sound test. Hope everyone is having a wonderful turkey day. And until the next tra transmission, keep calm and keyboard on. <laughs>